go to Las Vegas? Mm. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? Actually, yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, YouTube? It is your boy once again with another episode of Foolery. Okay, so let's jump right into this thing, man. You know, I've been talking about some of these um, women of color that's in power. So we're going to jump on the one that she's been taking the lead over all of them. The mayor of Dalton, Illinois, Tiffany Hinger. This chick has been running up the bill. Shoot, man, I did a video on her a few months ago. She had ran up a deficit of seven mil. So she's probably about nine by now. But the thing she's been doing has gotten the attention of the big dogs. So guess who in town now? That's right, the FBI. I told you they were coming. The FBI is sitting up in Dalton, Illinois, talking to the people. So... This where we at. So let's get in it and let's get with it. Hit that subscribe, like, share, and definitely hit that notification bell to do what? To get the next video. I'm not gonna hold it up no more. Let's kick this off. Let's go. Here we talk month after month about our deficit and what it is, and now we're not receiving the financial information and, and it, as if it's a punishment to the Board of Trustees, and I again keep encouraging, put the, put it on the website where it belongs. It's not a that it is a detriment in terms of our ability to do our job. And sometimes calling this information out, that's what we're left with if we try to work with the administration and they refuse to to give regular information. Like this is not even hard. It's almost like asking your name. Why you need to know my name? It, it's just it's way too hard, and it, that's what we're faced with sometimes. But um, clerk, he has a comment. Okay, so here we are. That right there is one of the trustees that's been trying to trying to get the finances back on track with a few others. And um, the new mayor, Tiffany, is holding up things because she is taking the credit card and treating it like it's her own. So, the, you know, the city has their own, you know, credit card, and she's swiping that bad boy like, Hey, man, this like she's at Target just buying shit. She's over here buying stuff. This chick went out and leased a Tahoe. And this Tahoe cost like $149,000 to lease. You know, they lease about three years. 55000 of that is finance charges. The reckless you can probably do in one setting and one buy. Listen to this mess as she explained, one of the trustees explained it to her and how the mayor tries to get out of it. It's, it's ridiculous. Please stay back. But let me tell you, here it is, dated December 27th, 2022. The cash price of a 2023 Chevy Tahoe, $93,216.71. Interest and APR $55,929.49. Total lease price $149,146.20. Tell me if it's not facts because your signature is all on it. You know what's the sad thing about this is she's talking about state your facts <laughs> when you know you did. <laughs> You know you did it. It signed off when they got your signature on the doggone lease for. I think, mean, like, come on, man. And the crazy thing is, you spending money like this to the point where they are now uh, about to repo the police department police cars. Where does that happen? You out here shopping like you a secret shopper out here. And they're about to repo the police cars. Where does that? Just y'all just watch this, man. I, I, <laughs> we don't have the specifics on there, but we know the finances aren't good, and that's a big concern. Yeah, 
Uh, so one of the one of the things that we want to put out in this interview is that they are threatening to repossess. Yes, yes, repossess police vehicles because of non-payment, which Trustee House brought up at the last board meeting. So talk about that email you got for uh, State Bank, which is our police vehicles, the Durats, and the Durangos, and the Fiats for Public Works. That bill was approved by the board in May of 2023. We received an email stating that those cars will be repossessed if we do not get any payment. Uh, yeah, so I received an email January 31st from the leasing company. Um, and I'll re I will read the, the email that I received because it was quite concerning. Yeah, so the email sent January 31st uh, reads as follows. Um, I will need a response by the end of this week, a payment being made on this past due account ending in 351. The payment is seriously past due and we will be making arrangements for repossessing all of the vehicles related to this lease. Your immediate attention to this matter is greatly appreciated. So that one is a payment the board already approved in May of 2023. We're talking seven months that this has gone to $76,000 behind. And now we're coming up on it being two years delinquent because we're going to in May is another payment is going to yeah. be due. Um, so upon getting that information, I immediately forwarded it over to the village administrator, to the finance director, and I requested for a status. I asked them to follow up with the vendor directly and to keep the board updated. It was not an attempt to have another video to put out, put out here, but of course, when we get into the boardroom and the meetings and they uh, try to portray it like, well, everything's okay, um, and it's not. Okay, so this is just getting sad. This, I mean... I try not to keep laughing, but I just think it's so funny. I don't know why, but you about to lose several of your police cars and staff cars. How are you going to continue to operate? Like the guy said, you're 76000 behind with another month about to end. So I don't know how much monthly the lease is, but that's still, you know, you're going to be sitting probably around $100,000 by the next month just for just for vehicles. So you don't have the money because you have the deficit up right now. You ran the cars up well over, like I said, close to probably about nine, nine mil now. So you don't have the money to pay it. So guess what? You're not going to have no police cars. So what are you going to do? Make people volunteer their cars to go out and pick up people? This is so ratchet how she's brought this little town to, I mean, she literally turned into Mayberry. They're going to have one police car. And they're going to probably end up with a sheriff and a Barney and one bullet. <laughs> oh man let me stop let me stop man let me stop let me stop but a lot of this stuff is like i said gotten her in hot water but i think the police car thing really got the attention and some of the other stuff people been complaining about um the fbi then hit the town and they're looking into her charity her business what else she got going on just a lot of stuff so check out this uh report that the fbi has put together so far yes there is an ongoing fbi pro investigating tiffany hayard who serves as the mayor of dalton and the township supervisor the investigation has arise from allegations of corruption and financial mismanagement within her administration and issues regarding accounts controlled by the village of dalton and the township these issues were poorly coincide with hanyard's tenure in both mayor and the township supervisor. The FBI investigation particularly focused on the public funds allegedly being laundered by Hanyer's CARES charity. In addition to the FBI probe, the Dalton Village Board of Trustees has voted to file lawsuits against Mayor Hanyer that is supposed to show transparency on what the mayor and her team spend. She doesn't want anyone to know. And that's why there is an FBI probe investigating Tiffany Hayer to address issues like conflict of interest, unauthorized hiring and firing, and the misuse of Dalton's funds. So basically, it's a lot of kingpin stuff, like some mafia type stuff. Hanya only hires people that she knows, even if they're not even qualified. Now, I, I purposely stopped that there so we could jump on this, what he's talking about. She's hiring people that's not qualified. Now, one of the biggest things that's gotten hot, no, gotten her in the hot seat is she's hiring friends. Some of them that has no qualifications. This lady here I'm about to show you was on governor assistant section eight and she gives her she was a waitress gives her a six figure plus job in a position she has no skill set in 
None. Went from making nothing, a waitress, on governor's system, making over a hundred, around 115000 a year. Explain that to me. And then I'm going to get to the other guy. That's the real problem. But I'm going to let y'all hear about this girl and how she's acting out here in the township. That's Carmen. Carmen is the assistant to the mayor in Dalton, and the mayor also appointed her as a board of trustee in Thornton Township. A woman that the mayor took from being a waitress at a very popular restaurant who's got a questionable background herself that includes fraud, and now she's a runner for the city girl mayor and even making important decisions as a Thornton trustee. Imagine being incompetent with no experience and being placed in positions overnight to make upwards of $115,000 while also allegedly benefiting from Section 8 living and assisting the mayor in draining the town into a $5 million deficit. We're going to get into how Tiffany Teflon Tahoe is using Carmen and other women and men to stay Teflon strong and get away with things you wouldn't believe. I think it's really cool can you be quiet, please? Ooh. You a clown. Look what you got on. Yes, that's City Girl Carmen live and in action. This is the caliber of people the mayor is hiring and appointing to important positions in Dalton and Thorne. The mayor has a thing for picking unqualified people to work for her. It's not about if they're fit for the position. It's not about if they're competent. It's all about if they are loyal to her. That's why Carmen got up at this meeting to not only praise the city girl mayor, but to also give praise to the one trustee in Dalton that is 100% behind the city girl mayor. That's Andrew Holmes. Clown, look what you got on. You know what I mean? But Andrew Holmes, people can say what they want to say about you, but loyalty and being a person of integrity and good character, it goes a long way. Carmen said that Andrew Holmes was loyal and had integrity. Now, you, you see what I'm talking about? That ratchet behavior? The mayor has it, and she hired somebody that has the same thing. So how are you going to run something when you saying now you saying these, you're not talking like a profession, and, and and ladies and gentlemen, she's speaking to elderly people in there. This township has a large number of elderly black people, so in the township, it's nothing but older people in there, like old old grandparent old, and that's who she's talking to. And so you give these people that type of position, and they go in there and show you exactly who they are with the ghetto mentality. No professionalism, straight ghetto. And now what's coming up is what I did a piece on the other person that she hired. And I'm not even gonna tell you who this is. I'm gonna let y'all check, check out the piece that I did on it. And then we're gonna chime in on this thing. She's getting rid of them and trying to bring her own people, except she's not doing her background checks either. She brings in her old friend who happened to have a uh, certain type of assault on young minor women, spent 25 years in jail, and thought it would be a good idea to bring him in on a six-figure, you know, six-figure uh, pay, and it, it'll be nothing. 46-year-old Lavelle Redman is close friends with Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard, who in September hired Redman as a code enforcement officer without the village board's approval. Redmond served 25 years in prison for the brutal gang rape and beating of two young teenage girls in the 1990s. Now, when she was questioned about this guy, she claimed she didn't know this about him. But if you did your background check, you'd have known. And plus, it's an allegation that that's her friend. Friend. And y'all known each other for a while. So when this man just did 25 years, you think you didn't, you didn't know that? Now, you think that's something. Here's the crazy kicker. His job detail is he has to go into the apartments and inspect the apartments that young single mothers live in. So you know how you have the Section 8 and all these government assistant homes or whatever. So they go in and inspect the homes, make sure nobody's messing the homes up. She's just giving given a SA or S offender access to come into their apartments where it's mostly single mothers living. You see what I'm saying? You just gave this guy a key to do whatever 
with these young women. So you think this man going to go in there and not put some threats out and threaten to kick somebody out if they don't do what? If they don't do this? That's what, like, this is crazy. Yeah, but that that's, you know, let's just move on to the next one. All the spending and traveling vacation they're doing. So let's let's do a spotlight on this, man. Let's like I said, I had to break this stuff down in different categories because it's so much. And I don't have all of it. I had to stop with the videos getting too long. Spending money frivolously, traveling, spending money that is not necessary for the village, using the taxpayers' funds like her own personal piggy bank. So you see right here, misuse of public funds have brought down many public figures in Illinois politics. And so it's no surprise that many are beginning to scratch their heads over what is next in the now snowballing Hayard saga. According to the individuals interviewed by investigators, there were questions about the hiring of cronies at exorbitant salaries, practices of merging the use of credit cards, as well as missing funds. They say that there are several questions regarding the spending that occurred involving purchases of clothing and other personal items on the credit cards for trips. So yes, the FBI is on the case. Like I said earlier, she's out here swiping that card like it's EBT at the first of the month. That's all you see. Now, she also has a history of terminating or retaliation toward anyone that says anything about what she's doing. Now, I'm going to tell you, man, she's turned into a straight little Nino Brown on everybody. You know, she stepped up in the town hall just like Nino Brown and was like, you know, I want my money. <laughs> I want y'all to see how this mayor showed up to one of their um, town hall meetings. This woman came in as a Nino Brown from New Jack City. Dressed just like him. Check it out. During one of the town hall meetings, the city mayor shows up as the character Nino Brown. We all know the old movie Nino Brown, the drug dealer from the movie New Jack City. She actually walked in dressed like Nino Brown from the movie New Jack City. <laughs> so what, what else can you expect, man? But check this out, how she just start firing people. And locking people out their offices and stuff. That's Stephanie Wiedemann was involved in the township politics. She started working there in 2002 and held various positions, including a full-time employee and contractor. In 2021, she was promoted to executive assistant by the late Thornton Township Supervisor, Frank Zuccarelli. However, she was terminated in March 2000 under the new supervisor, Tiffany Hayard. I think that everything she has initiated has been something to promote her, something to get her name in household, something to get people to buy into voting. She's talking about spending habits from... February to September of this year. Travel for the township supervisor is at an all-time high. Seven months of credit card receipts, and I can total about $174,000 of your money being spent on her senseless travel. And she says, come to a board meeting and ask her, what has she bought back that benefits the residents? I bet she's going to say she bought the bag back. But if that's the case, then why does the township need to take loans? She's laid off people due to financial hardships, but not pay employees to answer the phone and provide the services. You can't call the administration and get an answer at any point during the day. Aside from the credit card swipes for any and everything, she also gets a per diem when she travels. $600 a day when she goes out of state, $400 a day when she travels out of Cook County. And the kicker of it all is that some of the trips were for the mayor, not the supervisor. I do not handle anything as it relates to with credit cards. This is the assessor's office. Cassandra Elston has been the assessor here in Thornton Township for the past 10 years, an elected position that helps residents deal with exemptions and property tax appeals. But when she arrived at work this morning, something strange happened. This was your office? Yes. What happened when you tried to open it? He doesn't work. Not only had Elston been locked out of her own office, but boxes of sensitive documents that she kept in her office were spread around the common area. 
So who did this to you? Well, I'm managing this new supervisor, Tiffany Henry. But this is not going to stop me. This is my job. This is what I get paid to do. They are locking the trustees out of Village Hall tonight, forcing them to have a meeting out in the parking lot, all of which has Dalton residents shaking their heads in disbelief. I think it's uh, deplorable for her to uh, lock out elected officials, not only the residents, but the elected officials also, so they can conduct it. Getting kicked out is political payback. Now tell me if that's just not crazy behavior. I mean, that's just crazy. You gonna lock the people out so they can't do the job that the city hired them to do. Why? Like, you're not even thinking like, okay, we need to keep business moving. You just shut them out. And then we noticed this, um, the mayor position and this um, supervisor position that she had, like another county or whatever it is, connecting county. The mayor is only 46000 The supervisor position over this county is 200000 So I'm like, what the world is going on? So she boosted the pay up when she got in a position. How she did it, I have no idea. She's smart enough to know how to scam the hell out of people. But, you know, y'all just look at it and I'll come. When Tiffany Henyard has become a political lightning rod since she was elected mayor of Dalton, making $46,000 a year, and last year appointed Thornton Township Supervisor at more than $200,000 a year. Now, I, I thought that just didn't sound right, how the supervisor was making more than the mayor. So I looked it up, and, and guess what, people? That supervisor position only supposed to make around twenty five to $30,000. How they allowed this woman to get two hundred thousand from a thirty twenty five to thirty thousand budget, I have no idea who signed off on this shit there There has to be someone else who went along with this. It had to be there's no way you can say, "Okay, this position only paid this much, but you can give yourself a raise and boost it, and here's the kicker. If she run for office and lose, it goes back down to twenty five thousand. But if she wins, it stays at two hundred thousand. Tell me how she's like a little fucking mad genius, just running through the town robbing them, and they don't know what to do. They have no idea how to stop this woman. So it's glad the FBI came in because. She was going to milk them dry and bounce. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. And go to Las Vegas? Mm. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? Actually, yes. Vegas. <laughs> Mayor Henyard and other top officials traveled to Sin City in May to attend a shopping center conference. It's unclear if it helped Dalton land any deals. The credit card records do shed some light on tax dollars spent at several restaurants near the Strip, including Cafe Hollywood and Hot and Juicy Crawfish. They show township taxpayers also spent money on the Vegas trip on everything from steak dinners to hotels and $3,741 just on Henyard's round trip flight. Right. But I should have to sit up here and break all this down. <laughs> Tiffany on that, what happened in Vegas stays in Vegas stuff. You know what I mean? She's like, hey, we swiped that car like, hey, we in Vegas. That's what we supposed to do. Run it up. But she was like, she's shaking her head, no, but ain't nothing coming out. <laughs> but the lady was a little criminal from the start, man. So like I said, you don't do the background checks on people. Y'all give them these positions. It's always something there. You know, of course, they dig up something. When you get these off, people going to find something when you start doing wrong. Look at this one. Henyard arrested July 20th, 2016. Released July 21st, 2016. Criminal trespass to vehicles. This is someone who's breaking into vehicles. And here's her address. And it's Dalton, Illinois. 
So this, this could this be Tiffany A. Henyard Supermare? Could this be the mayor? Now, this is five years before she became mayor. So she's 32 here. Does this look like Tiffany A. Henyard Supermare? No, no. Let's see if we can find something else. Let's see if we can find the arrest record. Well, hey, I already found it. This was, she was booked in the Chicago PD. Look at this. Again, released July 21st. Charge criminal trespass to vehicles. And she had to pay $1,500 bond. Is this our Superman? If this is correct, which I do not know, it looks like the super mayor was uh, breaking into vehicles five years before she became the elected mayor of the town. Responsible for spending millions. I think these people didn't do a now, I don't know what this 32 year old woman was out doing at 1231 at night in somebody else's car, but whatever it is, it got you a mugshot. Now, when I talk about these um, people of power, these women that gotten into power, I like I talk about them because of the things they do toward our own people, you know, black people, because I'm talking about us right now. So they get in the office. You think, OK, somebody going to look out for us to help you move along the thing. But this never happens. Let's just be real, people. This woman get in the office and dogs the people out of this town. It's majority black people, it's probably 90% black in this town, or at least 80, I say 80%. She dogs them out to a point where she's trying to recoup this seven, at the time, seven million in deficit she had. She start taking $50 parking tickets and making them $500 parking tickets. And I want y'all to look at this when these people go to pay their tickets. If you don't go pay your ticket at this certain day, that 50 gonna be $500. So people were lined up to get in this building to pay these tickets and notice how long the lines and what color the people are. So that's why I talk trash about these people. People are like, oh, are you trying to come on our black woman and bag? I said, no, I'm talking about these people of color, these women that gotten in office and dogging our own people out. I don't know why you're doing it and what's the purpose of it. But if I see it, I'm going to say something. That's just what I'm doing. I'm going to catch some black guys too, don't worry. But right now, we were just talking about that little group I was doing. So y'all check this out, man. This Only on two tonight, outrage in a different South Suburban town, Dalton. Hundreds of people lined up to pay tickets they say they never should have gotten. As CBS 2's Jermont Terry explains, they were told to show up in court today or the fines would double. Usually the trains are the loudest noise in South Suburban Dalton. Yet on Thursday, the rumble came from hundreds in long lines outside the municipal court. How long were you in that line? I can't even tell you, man. It was a long day. Hey, I sat down, I stood up. I've been in line for two hours. They are all here after getting slapped with various citations all of a sudden by the city. Okay, so y'all see what I'm saying, right? And the sad thing is, the the medium uh, annual pay around that area is around 28 to 30 something like 33,000 34,000 it's not a lot so it's really a, a poor town when you look at it in that that way but you're like giving out citations and everything and marked it up two or three times more than what it is and you got these people going up here taking days off work to go up here and stand in these lines to pay this thing because you made it at a, a an awkward time frame where they had to take off work or just have to pay this extra bill and they couldn't do it because some of like i said you have 50 dollar ticket was now 500 dollars, so they had to go there and deal with this like the guy said sitting there two hours two and a half hours it, it's just like why it's crazy now this what's coming up is she did a she started this charity one of her charities foundation i don't know what this thing is what it's about but the first thing she did when she got in office was take $10,000 out the public funding and donate it to her charity, her own charity. Now tell me how legal that is. She swiped the card for her own charity. That was bringing the attention. But uh, the news got hold of that. I think it's 32, News 32. And 
Let's see what they have to say. Elston has been critical of Henyard spending at the township and believes but we want to tell you about the Illinois Attorney General's office now ordering a charity run uh, by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard to stop soliciting donations. The charity called Tiffany Henyard Cares failed to register with the Attorney General's office or disclose how much money it raised and how the money is being spent. Fox 32 first raised questions about her charity last year. Our investigation with the Illinois Answers Project found she was using public employees and taxpayer dollars to support the charity, including a $10,000 donation from Thornton Township, where she is supervisor. The AG's office says it is evaluating further action against the charity to protect donors and enforce state laws about charitable giving. My convoy fam, this is not even all this stuff. This is just some, I, like I said, if I would have kept on, this thing would be longer than what? But see, this is what brings it up to the FBI probe. The FBI is in Dalton, Dalton, Illinois, and talking to residents. And I want y'all to hear what some of these residents say they've been going through with this mayor. And we're going to close it out. Fox 32 has information indicating the FBI has launched an investigation into controversial Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. Dane Placco has been following allegations of her misspending and joins us now with an update. Dane. Yeah, we've been reporting for nearly two years on allegations of corruption surrounding Henyard in her capacity as Dalton Mayor and Thornton Township uh, Supervisor. And now we've learned from multiple sources that federal agents are in fact interviewing witnesses as part of a possible investigation that may or may not result in charges. Did the FBI agents you talked to seem serious about yes, your, very serious. your concerns? Very, very serious. Very. Uh, Lawrence Gardner owns a U-Haul rental and trucking business in South Suburban Dalton and says he went to the FBI several months ago, frustrated that the village of Dalton would not renew his business license. Gardner says he's been harassed and his business raided and shut down by Dalton police. He believes because he refused to make a donation to a civic event sponsored by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. And I talked to um, a couple of agents and I explained them what was going on. I gave them all my paperwork to show them what was happening in court and what was happening in Dalton. And they told me they was investigating and they would be in touch with me. Gardner is one of six people who confirmed to Fox 32 that they've been interviewed by the FBI, ranging from Dalton business owners to a former village employee and at least one public official. And we've learned the FBI has been using electronic surveillance as part of its investigation. Agents are asking questions about Henyard's alleged use of taxpayer dollars and resources, including massive spending on out-of-town trips, hundreds of thousands of dollars in police overtime for her personal security detail, using public employees and tax dollars for personal benefit, and holding up licenses to certain businesses like this Dalton restaurant. I've heard rumors that say, hey, I'm on the wrong team. Dwayne Wood has been trying to renew the business license for his restaurant for nearly a year. While he has not talked to the FBI, he believes he can't get approved because he's provided catering to several Dalton trustees who are engaged in a political fight with Henyard. I think I've been just targeted because of my association affiliation with a certain group of people. You know, the I had trustees. the trustees. I've, I've cooked for the trustees. And in a lawsuit filed by a Dalton towing company, the owner alleges their business license has been held up because, quote, George's Towing's refusal to support or contribute to Henyard's political campaign. In a statement, Dalton trustee Jason House reacted to the news of the FBI's involvement. We welcome any investigation that will bring transparency on how taxpayer dollars are being spent. Our residents deserve this level of financial transparency. We reached out to the FBI, which said it is policy for the agency not to comment on the nature, existence, or non-existence of any investigation that may be occurring. A public relations firm responded on behalf of the mayor, saying neither Henyard or the village of Dalton have received any subpoenas or been contacted by the FBI or any other law enforcement agency. Don't well, there you have it, guys. The FBI is on her butt. We told her. I thought the IRS was going to come first, but they probably working together now. But what did you think was going to happen? You actually thought you was going to just rip everything out this town and no one was going to say anything.
like the level of craziness, like you a straight criminal. Like you don't think about the stuff. Like someone said, like the little bit of power went to her head. Yes, it did. But, hey, let's see if you have a mug shot before 2024 ends out. And these people can get their town back. And we can get back on track. Well, God, that's it for me, your boy, as always. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe, like, and share. If you like the video, if you like these type of videos, let me know. I try to do more. Like I said, they just take more time. So I'll drop one in here and there. But let's do what we have to do to try to keep everything in line. Right? Right. So with all that being said, it is your boy, once again, Mr. Nobody. And I'm up out of here. Y'all stay vibing. Peace.